wanted to make a comment, a very interesting comment. I was posting to, to TikTok, and a friend of mine was saying and asking a question. What's wrong with? Now he was puzzled by the fact that I was telling everybody to be themselves. But he was puzzled. Because being a religious person, he felt that it is important to be like Christ or to be like Buddha or whatever, I don't know. So being a religious person, uh, there seems to be this mindset that we need to be a better person. And then so we have to emulate another personality. Right? Yeah. So when I suggested to him in the <laughs> in my videos that be yourself, he was puzzled. And I quite understand. He was puzzled because why be yourself? The question he must be raising in his mind was that uh, why do you have to be yourself? Because yourself is sinful. Yourself is evil. Yourself needs a repair work. So why be yourself? That doesn't seem the right thing to do. All our life we need to eradicate sin. And we have to be righteous before God. So how come you ask me and you ask everybody to be, to, to be yourself? Wow, isn't that funny? Are you asking the wicked person to be yourself? Ah, that was a very good question. So that's why I had to create another video for this. One thing is very clear. When you say that you need to become a better person, you know, that amounts to denying your own self. Right? That's the point. When you say you need to remove sin or to be to improve yourself, well, that amounts to a hatred for your own self right now. You don't like what you're seeing right now about yourself. So you want to change. That's the first important point that a reader of mine must know. Is there anything wrong with that? Of course there is. Because if you don't like yourself, you don't like the world you are part of. Your own very self, you don't like to be. That's, to me, is terrible. So, that's why I'm asking a person to be yourself. But is that not crazy? You may be asking me. Come on, friend. This guy's a murderer. This guy is doing a lot of bad things. His mind is totally self-inflated or he is not having a right attitude with life. He has to change. Isn't that right? It sounds very logical that he has to change. But, but do you know that in the Bible, God said, I the law does not change. So you may say to me that, of course, God don't change because God is perfect. That's correct. But I am telling you that our soul, which is of God, is perfect. So you don't change. We have a journey to take. And every one of us have a journey to take. We open the space-time based on our birth date and time. And that space-time is not perfect. That space-time comes upon us from our previous life. And so now, in this lifetime, we have a space-time that we must now bear for it. So what a soul needs to do is simply to know itself 
to know the space time and to bear the sins of the space time. Why? Because an evil action will merit an evil reply. A good action will merit a good reply. So based on this simple cause and effect, nature, the space-time itself, will correct itself sooner or later. So the man, what has the man to do? The man has to take on the space-time in his life. And that's why Jesus said, he said, I came into this world to bear the sins of others. That's right. Your soul is in your body. And your soul is the Son of God. Your soul is the Son of Man. And your soul is bearing the sins of space-time and giving rewards to space-time. A man cannot run away from his errors. Everything that you have done in your life, you will bear account of it. Every sins we will have to carry and our soul carries it for us. Our soul will feel the grief of it. That's right. But the final result of this punishment, so to speak, the perfect soul will pay. Why? So that you could redeem yourself. Space time will have full accounting. That's right. The rewards and the sins will all have to be measured back equally until it is fully balanced. You can't get anything in our space-time. Neither can you not owe it if you have done an evil in space-time. Full accounting is required. And the man will bear in his lifetime. And the soul will have to feel the grief of it as he bears the sin of the space-time. But whatever it is, Finally, the sins will be born by the soul. As your soul bears it, and as your soul rewards it, you inherit the space-time by the voice that you speak, by the breath that you breathe. Space-time is an external thing. It's not the me. However, as we realize our soul, we take on the load of space-time, its sins and its goodness. We take it on not by receiving from space-time anything, but rather we breathe in into me. And in this way we inherit whatever that the space-time is, as my own, as my kingdom. And so shall I read forever. The question really it boils down to the fact, why do you come into this world? We came into this world as a human being. And why? It's because the soul wants to inherit you. And it inherit you by going beneath the space-time into the place of breath and there I will commune with the breath of the space-time and there I inherit all that is my world. In other words, the soul never really changed at all. Your soul is perfect all throughout the journey. It's only space-time that has done evil and good. And space-time has to balance itself. And the soul will bear the sin of that space-time until all is redeemed, until all is forgiven. The responsibility of the soul is to inherit the breath of space-time. And to do that, the soul forgives. To do that, the soul accepts space-time fully as it is. 
But of course, space-time will have to bear its own sin. But the soul forgives. The point I wanted to stress here is that you cannot get anything from space-time. So, even if you have done the greatest contribution to the world, you will have to return it back. Because whatever you do and seek to benefit from this time is returned back because it is not my fault. So what I need to do and I came into this world is that I need to breathe in space time. Because only what is breathed in nearest to me is mine. Without that breath, without that voice, space time is just a self construct of mine. It's only an illusion, so to speak. It is what I create in my mind. It's a blue value. That's why I have to breathe in space time into me, for only what belongs to me remains eternal said before, to breathe in space time, I should have an uncovered me. It's where I need to know myself. That's right. Changing myself is not a relevant thing. I need to know myself. I need to be able to breathe in the depth of space time. To know myself to the extent that I could understand the voice that is within everything that I see and communicate with the voice to the extent that I inherit the world I lived in. Yes, no doubt there are errors that I've made in space-time. That means my actions in space-time may not measure up to the standards that are required for, by the other side of space-time. So because of that, I have to pay back for whatever there is deficit in space-time. And whatever there is reward that is coming to me, I will get it. But, but, it will just be pushed to the next lifetime. I will never find it in myself. The actions that I do in space-time, they remain in space-time. They were meant for the purpose of balancing. Nothing to do with changing me. I'm forever the same. But space-time needs to be changed because space-time is my creation. It's a creation of my own mind. And I have to change it. That's right. What is in myself is only breath. What is in myself is only voice. Space-time will have to do its own accounting and it's balancing in lives after life, but the soul belongs to me and is a fact. Therefore, knowing oneself is more important than changing space-time. Fine, you need to change space-time in order to make less errors, but you're not changing yourself. You're only changing space-time. Myself cannot be changed. My soul cannot be changed. My soul can only be understood and known deeply. The goal of every man, the purpose of a man's life, is that he should discover himself, not change himself, discover more and more of himself, go deeper and deeper until he could discover the inner me. Yes, the true me, which is myself. All that I think about myself is not the true me. All that I think of myself is only an image, it's part of space-time. My body itself is also part of space-time. And whatever I earn from space-time, I've got to give it back to space-time. And, and if I haven't given it back yet, it will be given back in the next lifetime. Yes, and if I haven't, if there's something due to me from space-time, then I haven't got it yet, then it will be forwarded to the next lifetime. But the soul never dies. The soul is forever. 
and it's always the same. And its sole job is to discover more of itself. And in order to do that, nullify the space-time so that a man can see his soul better. That's right. The quest of every man is to discover soul. And to discover soul, you have to do some nullification of your space-time. What we have created is only our creation. And what we have created is never me. But what we have created, we will inherit the breath of that creation. Provided we know ourselves deeply to inherit the breath. Because space-time is a creation of thoughts, but beneath thoughts is, is breath. And so we have to go beneath space-time to reach the breath, to inherit whatever that is we have created. So to inherit is to breathe in. Because breath is nearer to me than my thoughts is to me. Our journey in this world is to discover ourselves because we are truly the creator of our world. And but whatever we have created isn't me. Only a reflection of me. So we have to find me in that reflection, so to speak. We can't see yourself direct. We can only see a reflection. But but the reflection has got a breath. And the nearer we are to ourselves we can identify that breath and hear the voice speaking to us from that breath and thus commune with ourselves and thus discover I am that I am. Before I close this video I have to emphasize that every man, every man's soul has to return back to the one source, the one God. But returning back to the one source is returning back to me. It's not returning to any other thing. So that's our purpose in life, to know ourselves more and more and to return back to me. It's not an easy thing to return back to me. And why? Because we cannot really see ourselves. Our eyes only see out, but cannot see backward. So we see a reflection. But yet in that reflection of thoughts, of space-time, in that reflection is a substance called breath. Breath is more than what you think. Breath is the nearest part of me. So communicating with breath, learning how to communicate with breath, require a deep knowing of oneself. And therefore, a discovery of me, the discovery of the only one true source of all things. And that is me. God has placed in every man himself so to speak. And our job is to discover me.